as I drop any and all of my fear-based thought process and beliefs, what will my experience be with regard to my family members and my close friends and my children who may or may not be able to do these things? Particularly, I think there's a concern about people's children, you know, like they can't understand this, you know, how will the children come with them in this? All right, well, maybe they will and maybe they won't. First of all, you have to understand that if you accelerate yourself, you will probably then be capable of having the inspiration and imagination to know how to communicate to your children in ways that will allow them to understand these concepts as well and perhaps then make choices to go along, to shift along with you. That's number one. However, number two, you still have to treat children as individuals, as conscious beings that make their own choices and have their own life path. So the idea is that, yes, there may be situations where different individuals, be they family members or relationships or children, may not ultimately be capable of making the same choices and creating or at least projecting versions of themselves in the reality that you are going to. But again, you have to allow them to make their own choices. All you can do is accelerate yourself so that you have the greatest capability of teaching them how they can do so for themselves as well. And this goes for anyone else. You become a living example. You know exactly what to say. You understand these principles clearly enough that you can pass them along and then give them the best opportunity, as we have said, to practice these principles so they understand how to use them to understand that they're self-empowered, to understand the consequences of their choices, so they can make mature choices as they grow. And they will decide in that sense then where they truly need to be. But that's as much as you can do. You have to trust the whole process that even though someone may be born to you as a child, they're still a separate individual that has their own path. And sometimes their path may not always include being in touch with you. Now, maybe they'll go out, maybe they'll come back in. It just depends. But you have to treat everyone as an infinite, indestructible being. And if somebody doesn't understand something now in this life, they'll understand it somewhere. Nothing is lost. Nothing is wasted. No one will ever be permanently lost to you. Because on some other level, you will reconnect. And perhaps on that level, you will understand more clearly why they took the path they did, and it will make sense to you at that time. But you will always be bound by unconditional love if you are unconditional in your loving. So the idea that what will come up for many individuals under the scenario you just described is their fear of loss, their attachment to other people and things like that. And possibly even holding themselves back or making a choice to not move forward because of the anticipation that it could create some kind of loss. Yes, and this is where you anchor yourself to a reality that you're saying you don't prefer because you have a definition that there is such a thing as loss. Change your definition. Understand the greater selves that you are. See yourselves from a greater perspective, a higher perspective, where you know you are always in touch on some level. And that's what we're saying is when you accelerate your own vibration, one of the symptoms of going into a higher version of physical reality is you'll have the capability in your senses to be able to sense more of that being, more of that personality on another level. And you will know that you're always in touch. You will know that you're never really out of touch, even if temporarily the personality projection of that person may seem to be missing from your life, but they're not really missing if you are capable of communicating with them on a higher level. So it serves you to know you're always in touch by accelerating yourself forward and not anchoring yourself to a reality that has a definition of loss and disconnection in it. Then all you're doing is reinforcing the idea that they're missing. When in fact, there are many aspects of their being that may be attempting to communicate with you But then you're the one that's missing because you're not allowing yourself to go into a state where you could perceive that more of that person, not necessarily the personality, but more of that being may be attempting to talk to you. And you're not paying attention because you're not in the right frame of mind and the right state of being to know that you never actually lose anything. You just shift to a different level of understanding and communication. 
So fundamentally, it always comes back to dealing with your own state of being and whether or not you're staying in a positive state or you're succumbing, in a sense, to negative beliefs. Not that succumbing, really not succumbing. Not succumbing. Watch choosing. the definition. Choosing. choosing. Yes. Stay in the driver's seat. Stay empowered. Use empowering definitions. Not succumbing, choosing. Because when you know you're choosing, you have something to work with that you can change. If you say succumbing, then there's nothing you can do. You are powerless. Or at least you're using your power to pretend that you're powerless. And if you don't prefer to do that, watch your definitions because they determine how you experience everything in your reality. Um, you know, this question kind of ties into this also, because someone asked if you can talk about the transition from helpless infant to fully creating adult and whether infants are actually helpless and is this a gradual transition and anything, you know, that we can do to support our children. In We're just process. going to give you a very brief answer on that. <clears throat> the idea yeah. again is that yes, of course, in terms of physical reality, obviously children that are very, very young need the support and guidance of the adults. But the idea, again, is in allowing them to become powerful, <clears throat> mature adults, you must allow them, at whatever age seems reasonable to you, <clears throat> to first and foremost not pick up from you telepathically the idea of fear-based belief. So be clear within yourself as best as you can so you don't pass those ideas of fear along to them. Then, again, as you are able to teach them using your own imagination, the idea of in a safe place that your imagination has created for them physically, teaching them through actual actions the consequences of their choices, teaching them that they are as powerful as they need to be to attract whatever they need in life without harming themselves or anyone else, and adapting any lessons in physical reality you believe are important for them to learn, adapting them to their excitement, instead of dampening their excitement to fit into the lesson. These three things can empower a child to become a mature adult very rapidly because they're already an eternal being. They're already a high intelligence. And in many cases, remember that young children haven't forgotten as much of who they are. And therefore, they can actually be great teachers for the so-called adults that may themselves simply be children in the process of maturing.